that I am come to destroy the law. I didn't come to destroy the law, but to fulfill. I receive that. I accept that. Because all throughout the New Testament, you hear about not murdering, not killing, not envying, not being jealous. And it's spurts of the law written throughout all the New Testament. But it's not coming in the way that it was given by Moses. Yes, it's still don't steal, don't kill, don't lie, don't destroy. But all of that law revealed to us by Jesus in the New Testament is based on what you really are. Here's your spiritual nature. Your spiritual nature don't want to kill, don't want to lie, don't want to steal, don't want to be envious or jealous of your brother and sister. Jesus said, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And I know Moses said the same thing, but Jesus goes into details of how you do that. Like becoming humble as a little child. Come to your father as a little child because you will never reach the kingdom without the attitude of a little child. And how is a little child thinking? So it's not like, you know, I, I went on a website one time. It was a Jewish website. And I read a statement where this guy said, he gives and he gives to the poor, but he wasn't given to the poor out of love. He was given to the poor out of obligation and he sounded real angry that he had to give something to poor folks that he felt like should be out working and getting their own money. It's all about your attitude. I can say I love God or I can say I love my neighbor or whatever and say I'm giving to them but then on the inside why the heck I got to do this thing right here? Why can't they do this for themselves? There's no heart transformation. There's no baptism of the spiritual you. The law's purpose is to define and show you sin. That's why you're not supposed to be operating in just the law alone in the New Testament. I can spend a lifetime trying to keep up with the law trying to do the law. Doing the law doesn't make me be who I am. Doing the law doesn't make me kind. Operating under the law doesn't make me generous. Operating under the law and not murdering my brother does not make me under the spiritual me who don't even hate my brother. If you go around saluting and doing favors and stuff for people who are saluting you and doing favors to you, he said, what are you doing that gives acknowledgement or being thankful that I'm in your life? Because the sinners can do that. What do you have to be thankful for if you're doing the same thing on the level that they were doing things? But if I can get you to allow Christ power to work in you and get you to love your enemies, to do good to those who hate you, and to pray for those who despitefully use you and persecute you. Now you have a reason to be thankful because sinners can't do that. Anyone who see themselves as a sinner, they cannot accomplish that. There's the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament law. And Jesus told the disciples, look, blessed are your eyes that see what you're seeing today. And blessed are your ears that are hearing what you're hearing today. Because these prophets of old time, they were longing to see what you see and to hear what you hear. So bottom line, here it is for those who think because you're still observing those laws from Old Testament times, the feast days going to church on a Saturday. If you think that those particular actions are causing you to love God better or you winning brownie points with God for the future or you are building up your spiritual identity through those actions, then Christ is of none effect to you because Christ is the end of the law for justification. Now, if you want to do those things because you're in the habit of doing them, and this is what you've been doing all your life, it's not a sin to do those things. It's not wrong to go to church on Saturday, but it's also not wrong to go to church on Sunday. 
You have to accept that. I still don't eat pork because when you've been brought up in this all your life, I wasn't eating pork as a child. Why would I just all of a sudden start eating pork? Now there are certain things that I've tasted like I might have always wanted to taste some ham. No offense, I'm not trying to offend you. And so I tasted it to see what things I did like and for the most part I don't even like like lobster and shrimp. I don't even like those foods. Now as far as the holidays, you know right now to this day I've never really celebrated Christmas because again all my life I never celebrated it so there's no reason for me to start now but my children I've allowed them to choose of course they chose to celebrate it <laughs> it was funny but there's no conviction on me that I'm t I'm allowing them to do something that's breaking God's law you can't take the law and beat it over somebody's head that's using the law illegally the law still maintains its same effect, and that is to give the knowledge of sin. So when someone think, I don't need God, I don't need Christ, I can do all this myself, then that person needs to be pointed out, here's the law. And the law will convict them and show them their sin. But if you leave them there, and you don't bring them to Christ, which is the end of the law, then you have failed that person. If you think taking them to church on Saturday and you keeping these feast days and you observing or not observing particular days that that is going to cause that individual to grow up in love you're mistaken that's not the way that the law is supposed to work I'm glad to be free of that aspect of the law I'm glad I can get convicted and go right over to Jesus and get that up off of me and turn and do what I'm supposed to do immediately. I don't have to wait for once a year for the Day of Atonement to come to get my sins forgiven. My sins are forgiven daily as I make the mistake and as I repent daily. Hour upon hour, minute upon minute. That's why the disciples asked him, Lord, how many times shall we forgive our brother?" Well, if God commanded that you forgive your brother 70 times 7 a day, and he was just giving an example because since you want a number thrown out, well, is God's mercy and forgiveness less than man's, than what he commands man to give to each other? Come on. It's just not all making sense. You know, being born again or, quote, born from up above, allowed me to keep the law better than I was ever able to keep the law by observing the law and trying to keep it deliberately. And my point is just this. Today, we have so much to learn about what Christ has taught us we can do because of the kingdom being in us and Christ being in us to let us know who we really are, to show us our true identities. Paul said this is a mystery today. He said I'm going to give you a key of a mystery. Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's the secret. Christ in you, not you outside observing this Christ in you the hope of glory take care